One of the most well-known figures in the entertainment industry is Gene Roddenberry. His 1960s series creation Star Trek is loved by millions and has spawned several movies, television shows, and countless pieces of merchandise such as toys, games, books, comic books, and practically any other product you can think of. But before Star Trek, Roddenberry was a prolific television writer who was banking on the success of a different show. And it was because of this that he inadvertently helped to inspire the creation of one of the most popular toys ever made. So how did a guy who took us to where no man has gone before give the world not only Trekkies, but G.I. Joe as well? There is more to the story. In 1963, Gene Roddenberry had yet to become a household name, even though he had been enjoying a prosperous career as a television writer for a number of years. He had written for shows such as Have Gun, Will Travel, Bad Masterson, Highway Patrol, and Mr. District Attorney. On the heels of that success, he had just created his own show for NBC entitled The Lieutenant. It was a military drama set at Camp Pendleton in California, starring Gary Lockwood and Robert Vaughn, and was produced with the full cooperation of the United States Marine Corps. It premiered on September 14, 1963, and appeared as though it would be a hit. Thinking there might be an opportunity to license a toy based on the show, the producers made an offer to Hasbro to take a look at it. Hasbro had been looking for a new toy idea, and that's how Don Levine, the director for new products, ended up at a screening of the show. He was a little reluctant since toys based on television shows were only good for sales as long as the show stayed on the air, but he was willing to take a look. Unfortunately, Levine found the show to be more of a soap opera than anything a kid would watch, but it did help spark an idea and solidify some things he had been thinking about. Levine was very impressed with one of Mattel's most popular toys, the Barbie doll, in particular because it had the advantage of not only the sale of the dolls, but also the accessories, and he had been trying to come up with a similar idea for boys. In addition to that, he had recently taken notice of an artist's mannequin in an art supply store and wondered if the same type of moving parts could be integrated into a toy. Seeing the lieutenant helped to bring all of these ideas together, and he went on to create a working model of a military-themed toy with movable parts that they could sell to boys. The product eventually hit the market as G.I. Joe. Levine's creation was a huge success, and within two years, G.I. Joe was responsible for 66% of Hasbro's profits. And, like Star Trek, it eventually spun off into other successful products, including not only toys, but books, comic books, apparel, television shows, and movies. The Lieutenant, however, did not fare as well as G.I. Joe. Far from being the success that Roddenberry thought it would be, it only lasted for one season. What the Lieutenant did do was introduce Roddenberry to a number of people who would later migrate to the Star Trek universe. Gary Lockwood, the star of the show, would make an appearance in the second Star Trek pilot. Nicole Nichols, now famous for playing Uhura, made her television debut on an episode of The Lieutenant. Leonard Nimoy also made an appearance, as did Walter Koenig and Ricardo Montalban, as well as Majel Barrett, who not only appeared on Star Trek, but married its creator and stayed with him until his death in 1991. Gene L. Coons wrote for both shows and acted as producer on Star Trek, and Joe DeGosta served as casting director for both shows. Though the lieutenant has been largely forgotten, it did help inspire one of the most popular toys ever produced. And had the show survived, would Roddenberry have ever felt the need to create what would become one of the most well-loved and popular franchises in entertainment history? We will never know. But what we do know is that both Star Trek and G.I. Joe are important and well-loved pieces of our culture, and both exist because of Gene Roddenberry. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button and visit the channel again to find out what subject we'll explore next.